welcome to this episode of Disrepair. Today we cover a BMW 2002, not a BMW from 2002. Now a little background on the BMW 2002. It was made from 1966 to 1977 and it was called the O2 series. It was an entry level car and it first came with a 1600cc motor, but later BMW opted to install a larger 2 liter engine after both the director of project planning and the lead engineer had them installed in their own personal cars. Now there were two versions available, the base engine which produced 99 horsepower and a dual carb motor which produced 118 horsepower. There was a turbo version of the car that produced 168 horsepower that has the distinction of being BMW's first turbo car. But these are quite rare. I also think they have the coolest looks with their wide fender flares and factor air dam. But this car is not one of those. It is 1976 equipped with a standard engine and automatic transmission. The engine does have a cool Weber ITB setup but its tuning makes it run like poo. Let's fire it up. What? Dude, it's moving a lot. I wonder if it has a broken motor mount or something. This shouldn't shake that much. You hear the exhaust pipe too? I bet it, I'll bet that's broken. <laughs> oh god, dude. Oh, don't let it die because the battery it will not start again. Oh! Uh, the owner estimated this will take 30 seconds to do 0 to 60. Lawrence, what would you do if you had a million dollars? I'll tell you what I'd do, man. Two motors at the same time. <laughs> Some of y'all are going to cringe that we're pulling the original motor and swapping it to an EV. But before you change channels, realize that this engine is going into another 2002 to make it run again. So yes, it's a two for one. Now this particular car will feature a unique setup of dual stacked Hyper 9 motors producing 176 kilowatts of total power and 400 foot pounds. Heck yeah, man, look at this. Prince it's got muscles. It's a cake, buddy. Look at that. Yeah, it fits like a chip. It sure does. It's a direct drive setup with no gearbox. The motors are directly coupled to the drive shaft and then the power goes to the original rear axle. The most challenging part of the build was not the motors, but it was the design of the battery box, as we didn't want to cut any part of the car. The box houses seven Tesla modules, and it fits nicely between the fender wells and as far forward as we could put it in the trunk. So some of the features of this car, it's got input power steering, electric power steering, yep. electric uh, power steering, uh, uh, power brakes, uh, air conditioning, air conditioning. So this is at speed. This car rides great, drives really nice. It's, it's very quiet. Yes, we're probably going about 55 right now. And, and, we, the, and this I is our test uh, road. That's always the roughest road. Yeah, it's a rough road. We go five putting a GPS speedometer in it because there's no transmission in This one just goes straight from the motor straight to the rear axle. Uh, gear ratio, you know what it is? Uh, 364. This car has a, like, oh geez, incredible mid-range. Still handles like a BMW for sure. Runs great. Oh, I don't know, your thing fell off the deal. The G-forces. 
Oh, it handles like We're it's probably on rails. using, I mean, up a, up a hill like this, probably a thousand amps. That was probably a thousand amp hole right there. Wow. It actually got really good range, though. I mean, it's, it's about a bit about 130 mile range. It's pretty good. With, uh, dual motors, yeah, good power. Now I have to admit, I was a little skeptical of this build since it's just a direct drive and doesn't have a transmission. But after driving the car, it really looks good, it drives good, and it performs even better. I do hope you enjoyed the build. Thanks for watching. Until next time.